Ohio. Thank you so much. Please. Save some of it for the guests. Come on, let's relax. Welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. It's Saturday night. Let's kick it off with the big news of the week. I am, of course, talking about, well, you know what I'm talking about. It's been the World Beard Growing Championships. Of course we're going to start with that. <laughs> Come on, Sky Sports, where's your coverage? Uh, here are some of the contenders. Have a look at this guy here. There's one. That's a good-looking man, isn't it? I don't know why, but I suddenly fancy some Pringles. <laughs> look at this one. I don't know whether he styled that or just fell asleep. But here's the winner. You ready for the winner? Here's the winner. Mr. Dieter Besuch. I love this guy. Look at this. Wow. He deserves the title. He won in the partial beard freestyle category. Although you could store your CDs in that, couldn't you, as well? I think when they won, they put him on top of the stairs and watched him slink his way down. Uh, here's a story. I love this story. A radio station in Scotland are in trouble for referring to Punani during a daytime broadcast. <laughs> Punani is Scottish. So. <laughs> is that Scottish? They claim, when the complaint went through, they claimed it was all white because they said that a Punani is not a whiskey word, it's a sandwich sold locally <laughs> made of Italian bread with cheese and tomato, which is then beaten up. <laughs> Here's a coffee and a Punani. It's a kind of believable, but let me tell you, if you go home and tell your wife that at lunchtime you've eaten some hot, tasty Italian punani, <laughs> you will get in big trouble, OK? So don't even think about it using the sandwich excuse. OK, I wasn't sure I should show you this, but thank you anyway to the eagle-eyed viewer who has written in, uh, sent me this photograph, and he asked, when did I find the time to go to Russia and meet Vladimir Putin? Have a look at this, OK? Not him, look in the background there. Look, 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 you see? look at that. If you're of a nervous disposition, look away now. Here's a true story from China. A man in China decided to have a full-body fish spa, but with eels. You know that thing where... Yeah. You know you put your feet in the thing and the little fish, they nibble away at the dead skin and it's meant to be nice and invigorate. He had the full-body version. Here's what went wrong. You might be able to guess in advance, but one of those <laughs> swam up his manhood. Even David Williams wouldn't swim up there. I mean, that is a great eel. That must have been one sore dong, which isn't his name, by the way. That's not his name. That's the... Uh... That's hard to believe. We did the one sore dong joke. Uh... And finally, a GPS satellite, you know, the one that beams information to satnavs, has apparently gone out of control and is currently crashing down to Earth. Now, we don't know where it's going to land. Oh! <laughs> You have arrived at your destination. <laughs> I think we've got to get on with the show, ladies and gentlemen. I think we found it. OK, let's get down here. Oh, a, bit of, a bit of housekeeping. OK, let's see who's on my show tonight, shall we? We've got a fabulous lineup for you. My first guest is an irrepressible force of showbiz nature. He is Mr. Louis Spence. There he is. Oh, Louis. How lovely to see you. Nice to see you too. Good to see you, Louis. You look gorgeous as always. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Louis has a book out that documents his life all the way from when he surprised the midwife. Uh, when he popped out with jazz hands already going. <laughs> <laughs> Louis Spence, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, the fabulous Louis Spence. <laughs> My next guest has got to be the only man in the country who, when he watches Downton Abbey, hopes one of the servants will make a noise like a sheep. It's <laughs> Harry Hill. <laughs> Uh, Harry, what's the... You, you, look slightly, you look slightly different. Uh, yeah, well, I went to that same place that uh, Wayne Rooney and my friend Jason oh. Gardner. You had a little bit of... A little bit from the back, put it on the front. I'm thrilled with it. A little I'm bit of fashion. I'm thrilled with my new hair. Well, it, 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 it takes years off you. Well, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> hoping to get offered different parts. You know, you roll. And, uh, it's going to be good for my career. I think, uh, <laughs> I think it's an improvement. Uh, you know, Harry has to watch every single program on TV, more or less, don't you? You have to watch just about everything. Yeah, everything. For, uh, for the TV burp, he watches Big Brother, uh, Big Brother's Little Brother, Big Brother's Little Brother's Step Brother, um, <laughs> The X Factor, The Extra Factor, The Extra Factor plus one, X Factor <coughs> two, Chelsea nil, E4. <laughs> E4 plus one times Y equals pi R squared. You watch all of them, don't you, Harry? And Nemmerdale. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's on the show as well with his beautiful new lustrous locks. You look gorgeous. 
OK, and my next guest is one of Britain's greatest actresses, ladies and gentlemen. It is, of course, Dame Helen Mirren. <laughs> As always, you look absolutely sensational. Thank you. You always do. Thank you. You know, more maybe effort. I I more and more effort. <laughs> you look fabulous, and I should admit this, but um, Helen, of course, made even the Queen sexy. I don't know about you, but I cannot now look at a first-class stamp without wanting to lick the front as well. <laughs> Dame Helen Mirren's on the show. We're thrilled she's here. Thank you so much for joining us. And as always, we bring you the very finest music tonight. It's from that great band, Kasabian. They're back. There they are. Kasabian. You know, uh, Kasabian are a tremendous band. You know how much I love you, music fellas. Do you mind one critical note here? Go on. <laughs> Don't sound like that. It's not, it's not going to be a, a big attack. I just wondered whether you considered choreography in your stage show. And, of course, you know... Tonight could be the... Look, actually, Louis, you look like you're part of the band there with the black thing on. Oh, listen, I don't mind giving him a hand. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> there you go, it's Kasabian. They'll be performing live right here in the studio later on for us. Uh, before we get to that, let me tell you about an American company. They brought out the world's tiniest digital camera. It's the size of a fingertip. Have a look at the photograph there. And I think we have one as well. There it is. Is that it? Let me try and balance it. Oh, no, that's a razor. <laughs> there, it is. there it is. Look at that. I'll put it on my fingertip, balance it. That's it. Can you see that? The only problem with this is... You... I like people going, oh... <laughs> the only problem with this is you do have to go to a special place to get your photos developed, because it's such a tiny camera, you have to go to a very small branch of boots, which is actual size. <laughs> they also sell medicines and tiny toiletries there, but weirdly, Louis tells me the condoms are just the right size. <laughs> It's the small ones that pack a punch. I understood at least half of that sentence, so we're heading in the right direction. <laughs> Let's get my first guest out. He has a book out called Still Got It, Never Lost It, which sounds great, but it's actually about his oyster card. Will you please welcome <laughs> Mr. Louis Spence? Well, that was... Times uh, have changed. <laughs> quite a spectacular group of young people, although I can't help but think a couple of them are wasted on you, Louis. Oh, well, but there's three what aren't. Uh, uh, Louis, what a couple of years it's been for you. It's been incredible, hasn't it? It hasn't even been a couple of years, actually. It's only been about 18 months. This is since Pineapple Studios yeah, on TV and now... Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you've been in show business kind of all your life, haven't you? Oh, listen, all your adult life. Well, I, like you said, I mean, literally, I did come out the womb with the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck. I think I was doing a disco dance in there for my kidneys and my spleen, so... You know, I was, like, in there, coming out like this. So, yeah, <laughs> I've always been in it. Uh, and then the, the, the dance studio shows what put you out in the public eye, yep. I guess. And so yep. since then, it's snowballed. It's yeah, gone... it's just, I mean, since then I've done um, Pineapple Dance Studios, then Louis Spence's show business. Yes. Um, all the things I can't say. Yeah. And yeah. then I've just come back from America and I've did my own show out there called Louis Spence Dance Project. Dance, I can't say it, it's all the S's. You Louis... really don't... I mean, this is something for me, but that really is quite a major impediment you have yes. there. I mean, no. I... <laughs> For me to say that, I because know. it's quite, it really is a <laughs> Yeah, and it spits. Yeah, I've it noticed. It spits. The book comes with a spit guard, so when you get my book, <laughs> as you open it, the spit guard comes up. But when I was in America, because I did my show, Louis Spencer's Dance Project in America, for Oprah Winfrey. Oh? <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so when I did it out there... When I mean, you say you did it for her, there were other viewers as well, though, surely. Oh, yeah, it wasn't just Oprah. Oprah. God, I know she's big, but she's not that selfish. She let me spread myself around. You know what you... <laughs> but the thing is... Oh, I don't mean that. Oh, I didn't mean... Oh, I didn't mean that about Oprah. I meant bigger than... You know, oh, I'm going to dig you a hole. You mean like a huge star, is she's what you a, meant. She's, yes, isn't she? Meant. I mean, she's yeah. like, you know... You didn't mean a big she's girl. She's bigger than Barack. Yeah, yeah. 
Anyway, so yeah, but when I was in America, but when I was in America, the thing yes. was, where the Americans are much polite, well, I think we just say what we think, don't we? When I was spitting at the Americans when I got excited, <laughs> I said, oh, I'm sorry about that, I've just spat. They'd be like, oh, no, that's fine, no, oh, that, that's really okay. And really, it wasn't. So, some, you know, you can spit at them. And but it can't. wasn't big gobbets that you could see no, on the phone. No, no, it was it's just... A, it was a fine, just, Jewish spy. Yes, yes, okay, it, was, it was a Jewish spy. It's like a mist. It's a mist. Yeah, yeah, it's a... It's, it's a, a mist. <laughs> <laughs> You're, I believe, you're one of those people who's very health conscious. You are a, a bit of a hypochondriac, is that right? Well, I mean, no, I'm not a bit. I am totally. I because mean, I'm when Because when people... I'm getting to the stage now, if, if I'm with people, I, sometimes I'll wash my hands in the toilet and then I'll use a piece of tissue to open the door. Yeah. But, you know, you start yeah. getting more paranoid. No, I'm not obsessive compulsive. If people sneeze on me, I don't like yeah. it. So with you spitting... Yeah, I know, I know, darling. But no, I am checked for everything. You're getting nothing off me, honestly. <laughs> Well, I mean, I am a hypochondriac, but it comes from... I mean, this is quite serious. I mean, I've suffered with anxiety and panic attacks all my life. And, and the real panic attack, is, it's a serious thing. It's not... Yeah. I mean, people think that, you know, have, calm down and sort yourself out. But I know when people have a panic attack, there's nothing they yeah. can do. It's really tough yeah. for them to get through. I mean, it's like, the, the, you know, people say, you know, uh, what's, you know, the biggest thing for you? The biggest thing for me is getting through every day, because it is... I say it's that bad. I've had it since I was about nine, and my, all my family have it. It's definitely hereditary. I don't care what they say. And I'll get, you know... My heart will race, I'll get ang uh, you know, I'll, if, if, in enclosed spaces. And uh, so, so is it triggered by being in a small space, or is it something you're worried about work I've or life? It, I've had it already today. You, you know, had like, one today? Yeah, yeah after, you know, after I've sort of been running around, then just before I come here, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not nervous about coming well, on the show. Why would you be nervous about this? Well, you're I'm never right? nervous with you, Jonathan, but it's just, I'm always excited. Excitement, I, I And excited can, can turn into anxiety. Mm. Anyway, it is, it, is, it is a serious side of me, in a sense. It's something I've always suffered with, and it does affect every part of my life. But your health I was concerned about, because I know, because I know you're someone who, they say, and this is quite, they say that dancers die twice. You've heard yeah. that phrase? Once when the career, they can't dance anymore, yeah. and that's a big thing in a dancer's life. Yeah. But you still keep it going yeah. right now. You still can do more or less all the things yeah. you did as a young dancer. Is that well, I mean, I think that, for me, I always kept my training up. I never, even when I decided to stop dancing, which is at about 31, I thought, that's it, you know, I can't dance behind the Spice Girls anymore or, or take that, because I'm a bit older than them, and I did them both, not literally. And, um, <laughs> but I thought, well, I can't do that anymore, but yeah. I still kept up dancing, because it is who I am. It is just part of my makeup. I cannot not do it. I just love it. But do you have to stretch for longer now? Do you have to start yeah. the warm-up earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that kind yeah. of stuff? Everything, everything's more difficult, but it's just discipline. And as a dancer, or someone who's an artist of any kind, it's, you, you just, you're brought up with that discipline. I mean, I've been dancing since I was five. You know, it's all I've done. And I, you know, I, I went off my own back. You know, my parents didn't have to push me. I mean, they didn't have time. But your, the, your parents supported you, they encouraged you, because yeah. you got into uh, Italia Conti yeah. Stage School, and this is in your yeah. book, and I, I very yeah. much enjoyed your book. Thank you. But you got into the stage school, and initially you didn't think you could go there. You didn't think they could afford to pay for it, is that Yeah, right? well, they couldn't. I mean, you know, like I said, I've got three sisters, and my, my mum and dad had just bought their council house, and my dad had a business, and um, he took a second mortgage out on the business so I could go to school. And, you know, my, my sisters were told that they're going to have to, like, not go on school trips or... Not that they did anyway, because my mum had a new pair of tits done, so the fact is none of us went on school trips anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, they, they, were totally, they were totally supportive of my parents of whatever I wanted to do, yeah. as long as I was happy. And, you know, they gave each one of us as much as they could. But, you know, I was just... I was, they knew this was my dream. They knew this was something that I had to do. You know... It was very evident, I think, to everyone in my family and on the council estate I lived that I was gay from a very young age, you know. Well, listen, let's get on to that afterwards because I what, want to talk what, to you about darling? that because... Uh, no, because I, uh, that's a part of the book which I thought was really sweet and really touching yeah. and really, um, really quite moving as well. So we'll talk that. And also I've got a clip I want to show you. After the break, I'm going to show you a clip of Louis in action on an Italian TV show. You must have been called Fantastico. Fantastico. OK, and I tell you, Italians know how to make TV shows. <laughs> I'll just warn you now. We'll be back after this. Don't go away. <laughs> see them back again. I don't want them. Don't even go there. It's all sweaty. <laughs> Louis. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Back to me. Back to you. You just, just an audience and you're gone, aren't you? I, you I, just... I, didn't, I, I, I thought this, this is what I love. I love people. And, I, and I, if you've got an audience, you have to, you know, act to them, isn't it? Isn't it, Helen? Dave. When... <laughs> uh, uh, so, Louis. <laughs> Italian television, OK? Yes. 
I love European TV. I love those yes. Saturday night shows you get. In, if you're ever yeah. in France or Italy on holiday or something, you tune in. You see these shows that are, seem to last for hours. Yeah. You can't quite work out what's going on. People are smoking on there, drinking, yeah. fighting, dancing, everything. And you were on one called uh, Fantastico, Fantastico. And this was like, was it 20 years ago? Yeah, it would be uh, 19, 1991. Okay, so you, yeah. went, so you were just a kid, really. Yeah, when you were absolutely. Early yeah. 20s. What was the concept behind Fantastico? Well, it was, what it was, it was their lottery show, their oh, big okay. lottery at the end of the year. But it was the biggest show they had on their television like, at that time of the year. And it went right through Christmas and New Year. They had all the biggest acts, like, you know, um, at that time, Tina Turner, Whitney, um, you know, Ray Charles, all these kind of big American stars Huge that come stars, on. Yeah. It was really big. And they, they, they had a big balletto that they called it. And they really went, you know, went for it with the dancers. And so they went for it, and so did I. <laughs> so they, they love a big dance spectacular, don't they? Yes, uh, even yes. more than we do. And so you were initially you were in the course. I and was then in the core, and then I became what they call primo ballerino. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, you know, I said, well, so, I don't know, perché parli italiano? Perché è stato lì quasi un anno, per questo ho imparato subito, perché se non parli italiano, non lo sapevo che dire la gente, capito, così. So I could always work there if I wanted, if it all goes tits up here. <laughs> I'll have a Panani, please. Yeah, a Panani. <laughs> I know what that is. I have to tell Dane Helen what that was. Did you have to explain Panani Dane to Helen Dane Helen? What's Panani? <laughs> oh, is that something I'm not interested in? <laughs> he said, yeah, you don't touch the carbs, yeah. do you? Um, <laughs> so uh, we have a clip of Fantastico. Uh, it's not a long clip. I, I, you know, I could watch the whole show. I would happily sit yeah. there and watch it. So this would have been your first big TV experience, I guess, these shows. Yeah, th this was, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. Have a look at this. It's Louis Spence uh, back when he was just a young dancer what on Fantastico. Hallucination. That's some kind of weird dream. But that was, that was quite tame. And did you see that? It's like, you know... You were showing a lot of It things. was like all out. And there was, I mean, as thin as a rake. You were, but it was, it was all... I mean, Gaga had nothing on those costumes. No, I'm you telling were, you, look you, at me. I mean, eggshell on me head and, and my tits out. <laughs> I mean, I was doing it long before. You were ahead of your time. I certainly was. OK. Um, <laughs> So that was then, yes. this is now, you this can still now. do it, you wouldn't necessarily yes. want to do that, but you can still yeah. do it. No, I can still um, do it. But the book, Louis' book is out, and, uh, and it's, a, you know, it's such a sweet book, because it covers all your life, and I, I really got a feeling for your, your childhood, your family, and your family seem really, I mean, filled with characters. And yeah. the part of the book which I thought was uh, especially uh, quite touching, and, and uh, unexpectedly so in some ways, is uh, when you first came out. Yeah. Uh, and this was kind of fairly late in your life, really. Yeah. Um, and you told your sister first, mm -hmm. and you asked her not to tell anyone. Yeah. But then she did, didn't she? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't feel the need to come out, in a sense. Because, Is this because you thought everyone knew already, or just...? Well, I just, I mean... I, yeah, I presume everyone knew, but I didn't, I didn't feel as though I had to go and say, I'm gay. It wasn't an issue. It wasn't... Why, why would I have to go and say I'm gay? What difference does it make anyway? You know, that's how I felt, and I felt as though I've always been very open with who I am. And my sister came to watch me, and I was in Miss Saigon, and she was staying at my house, and I'd lived with some gay people. I said, I'm gay. She started to cry. I was like, what are you crying for? I mean, I'm the one, I'm happy. You know, you don't need to cry. But she wasn't unhappy for you then. I guess it was no, just an emotional moment, she wasn't was, it? She was emotional because I was gay and she, I suppose her, you know, her thoughts on that was that, you know, I'm not going to have a happy life or it's going to be tough for me. And I was having the best time of my life. But I guess it was a little bit, uh, it seems certainly, you know, that it was uh, harder to be openly out back then. I mean, yeah, and also them. back then because, I mean, you know, it was when AIDS first came out, HIV and AIDS, and it was a stigma for gay people. Everyone was worried about that. And Everyone, it seemed to be, yeah. and you know, it was just, you know, people's ignorance, the association was, you're gay, you have AIDS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very, very, that's how it was. And, um, and it was, just, but I was having such a wonderful life. And I said to her, you know, I don't want you to go back and tell mum and dad, because you don't need to. Anyway, she did, which wasn't a problem. Um, and... My parents, my mum and dad wrote me this, you know, incredible letter. Well, the letter's in the book, and I read it, yeah. and I thought, this is such an incredible, it's such a sweet letter, it's so kind of uh, heartfelt. Can I read a little no, bit from absolutely. that? I just want to read you a little bit, because this is from Louis's mum to him. Well, it's signed mum and dad, but your yeah. mum... No, your my mum, mum wrote, wrote my dad can't spell. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it goes on for a while, but the bit I thought, this is near the end, which is because you have brought so much joy in our life and never any trouble. I cherish more than ever the special relationship you and I have always had and will share forever. Please don't ever feel you've let yourself or your family down. You have a great and fulfilling life ahead of you, Louis. Please take it by the horns and uh, <laughs> enjoy every day. Life is too precious to pass by without taking all you want from it. I'm sure now we can have a better relationship as a family than ever. And this is the bit that I thought was so sweet. She ends up saying, I hope this causes you no embarrassment. 
Yeah. So she was worried that writing to yeah. you that this might embarrass you that she was being so lovely. Yeah. And then your dad says, please never come home again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, they end with, we love you, yeah. Louis, mum and dad. Yeah. kisses. What an incredible... And that must have been a moment there. And you're happily married. You mentioned I that before. I am happily married. Away. I've been together... We've been together 11 years on the 20... Oh, he's going to kill me. 21st or 20th. Well, you keep it kind of quiet, but I have a photograph of you with your husband here. Um, <laughs> No, 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 no. My partner okay. literally wants nothing to do with it. I mean, he loves, he loves what's happening, but... So he... when you go out, do you have to uh, be separate from each other? Yeah, do you, yeah. you, so you don't oh. walk down the street side by side holding no, hands no, no. just in case? No, no, no. We walk down the street, but I say, if I, go, if I get invited somewhere, he will never come. If, um, like, I mean, to the front part of it, like yeah, if you go to yeah. like Pride of Britain or anything, like, he would never come. But that's good in a way, because it gives you the chance to flourish and be who you yeah. are, and you don't have to worry about him turning up on, you know, some sort of like low-rent celebrity driving school show. Exactly. But the thing is, you know, it's like, we're so different that when I go and list in all the things you know, like, he doesn't like, you know, he doesn't like reality shows, he doesn't like people who are, you know, a bit outrageous and a bit loud, he doesn't like this. And I thought, shit, I know opposites attract, but something's definitely got wrong. You know, but I, I, I just think, why is So he when with you me? go off on one and you're doing all, yeah, yeah. Well, what does he do? He just sits there, looks at you, and shakes yeah. his head? He just, well, it's depending how far I go, he just goes, or he goes, because he's Spanish, I think you went too far. <laughs> right, right, fine. I've heard he's very handsome. He is, he's absolutely gorgeous, yeah, and eight years younger. <laughs> Well, you've obviously got somewhere to go, do. Anything um, else on your list that you've missed out that we need I've got to do? Loads. I could talk to you all night, Louis. Yeah, I, I know you could, but anything this. important that we need to get out? No, well, you've already covered everything. I've done my show in America, I've done my book, I've got you on chair, I've got Dame Ellen out there, I've got a nice, lovely audience, and I've got four dancers to sort out, out back. I'm done. See ya. Louis, thanks, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh, I hope Harry Hills brought his dancers with him. We'll be, <laughs> we'll be chatting to Harry after the break. Don't go away. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome back to the show. OK, uh, the dance has gone now. I promise you, no more dancers. Uh, shocking news this week. A frog has been found in a supermarket bag of salad. And if you're worried at home, it's this sort of size bag here. I've got the bun here. See, that's the bag. The salad's in. That kind of thing. And if you're concerned about it, you could just return... Oh! Why he's jumping of his own accord. <laughs> and if you don't want to take it back, you can just do this. And then you've got pre dressed salad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's get my next guest out. He watches a lot of TV. He watches so much TV, he hasn't had his tea at the table for 12 years. Here he is. It's Mr. Harry Hill. <laughs> Go sit down. What's going on yeah. with your head? That's not right, Terry. What? It's not right. It's still quite sore, actually, and Jonathan. It's not... Don't touch it. It's still quite sore. Ah! Don't touch it. It's not... Ah! The... It's My, just hair! A... <laughs> My hair! <laughs> yeah. I want it back. You can't have it back. It, it you shaved been. it off. You've got to live with it. <laughs> it has to go back uh, in the bag. I, I think... <laughs> It has to go back in the bag to, to stay go, moist. Yeah, it's got to go back to the store. <laughs> and I'll, get that, I'll get that back to the hospital. That's fine. horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. You know, Louis Spence, of course, the first time I saw Louis Spence wasn't on the Panama Show. It was on your show, on TV Burp. Yeah. You, discovered him. Well, you kind of discovered him for, for us. Uh, right? Well, uh, you know, I watch a lot of TV for TV Burp. Yes, you and, you know, to, yeah. and I might be watching, you know, you watch a lot of stuff and you're watching it thinking, God, I've got a show on Saturday. What, what am I, I, I going to talk about? And then I put in uh, Pineapple Dance Studios, and straight away I thought, well, that's the first half sorted out. People went nuts. Uh, but have you found any other people who you think, um, you know, he's a star, you found a star mm. there. Have you found other guys in these reality shows, like, okay, that one's got it, that one's got it, this one might, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but you think they've got what it takes? No. Okay. But, um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but you're hopeful. We get all sorts of, you know, odd, odd people. You know, like you have these guests. You have, you know, Dame Helen Mirren, and yes. you might have Kasabian and Louis. Yes, we do. And we get, you know, the guests we're excited about. Oh, we can, can we get the family from, well, Wife Swap? Or can we get that old bloke from uh, the, the documentary about the old people on Whiteley's? You know, yeah. these are the... 
These are, these so, are big bookings for you. Yeah. That's an exciting day in the office. We don't pay much. Yeah. It's, uh, we Someone elevate from Big them. Fat Gypsy Wedding has said yes, you go out, that's it, job done. Yeah. Did you like, but you weren't on for that show. That must have been killing you because there's a show where you could have had a lot of fun. Yeah. Brilliant. And that guy then went, he went into the Big Brother house, of course, the, yeah. uh, the King of the Gypsies. Yeah. Uh, Paddy, or I don't know, he's the king, but he was a big figure on the gypsy scene. I think these we call them travellers. Travellers. He, but I think, the, the, well, the I think show was called Gypsy Wedding. Yeah, the, well, Channel 4 wouldn't let us uh, use any of that. Because Why not? It, because because they, the show had sort of exploited, I, I mean, I don't know what you thought, but it sort of exploited the... The, the travelling community? The travellers. <laughs> you couldn't deal with it sensitively, in a supportive way? They wouldn't let us have it. <laughs> okay. uh, so some people say, no then, obviously I didn't know that. I thought everyone said, yes, TV burp, everyone loves TV burp, have the clips, have as many as you want. No, not at all. I mean, wow. for a long time, the B well, the BBC wouldn't let us have uh, EastEnders for a long time. But now they do? Well, sort of. Well, we have to tape it off. We have to tape it off the air. <laughs> so, so they don't really do. let you have it, you steal it? We sort of, we sort of steal it, yes. <laughs> Um, Coach Trick was a revelation, once again, yeah. something I discovered mm -hmm. via your show. Uh, do you actually get enjoyment from watching them still, or is it just work for you? You're thinking, uh, you know, I've got to slog through this, or do you think, you know what, I'm going to quite enjoy the next the half best, an hour now? Yeah, the best way to watch Coach Trip is on my show. Yeah, really. And that was... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they make hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of those Coach yeah. Trips. Yeah. You know, it's a coach going round Europe, and it's, it's going round Europe all the time. So it's, it's picking up people, dropping off people. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the show. Yeah. It's essentially a coach trip. Yeah, that yeah. never ends. Uh, <laughs> let's have a look, though. But, you, but somehow you managed to take that simple straw and, like Rumpelstiltskin, weave it into TV gold. Have a look at this. So, how is morale amongst the rest of the coach trippers? I bet there's a real holiday feel. What do I want to celebrate your two weeks for? <laughs> no, because I don't really like you anyway. Oh, okay. Bit altruistic, vile, naive, queen. That's what you are. We're all going on a summer holiday. No, 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 no. 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 more work for a week or two. To make your dreams come true. There you go. There you go. That's a post trip on TV, but I enjoy the show very much indeed. Do you miss touring? Do you miss doing um, a live comedy? Because I first saw you, you were a live comedian, I saw some big live shows you did, and yeah. they were great. They were great fun, they were very exciting, yeah. uh, always different, always special. You don't do that anymore at all. Well, I think, yeah, some people don't even know that I, that I, was a, I am a stand-up comedian, you know. But I don't do the... I mean, just as the, the big stand-up tours took off, you know, everyone's doing the arenas. Stadiums now. Yeah, that's when I stopped, just yeah. as that was... This is it was taking Just off. Just when you could have made some serious yeah. money. Yeah. yeah, but I mean the touring, it's a tough one with the family, you know, with the... Because you're never there in the... You know, you're never there at... Uh, when the kids come home from school and... It's a bit of a tricky one, really. But you must be in your strange little cell watching TV when they come home from school anyway, aren't you? And that's a tricky one because obviously the kids come home from school and they say, can we watch TV? And I say, you watch too much TV and they say, well... <laughs> how many coach trips have you watched today? <laughs> Howie, uh, you kind of dominate early Saturday evenings um, because uh, TV Burp, you know, genuine, I'm a huge fan of that. Everyone in my house loves it, but you do You've Been Framed as well. And yes. you kind of breathe life into that, which I would have thought was impossible, but you've made it funny again. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, a lot of it was getting rid of the presenter. They used, you know, used to have a presenter. No, but they used to go <laughs> to the presenter. not that particular presenter, do you? You know what I mean? Get rid of that one. No, but it, well, they used to go to the <laughs> presenter and it would slow it down. So, I mean, you know... It was just a voiceover now, yeah, which yeah. I think helps to move it along, and it's only really as funny as the clips. Uh, but how often uh, can you find joy in the clip of someone being hit in the testicles or falling over one off a bike? Because that's the kind of that's, yeah. a, that's the meat and potatoes of the show. Yeah. I mean, it's old ladies falling over a wedding. Oops, we can see her knickers. It's my favourite kitten on a draining board. Oops, he's fallen in the swing bin. He's okay. Don't worry, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Have a kit where you see the cats okay yeah. afterwards? Yeah. yeah. All yeah. the ones where the kids get hit and the animals, that we always have the thing where they, they crash the bike and then they get up and go, yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have, but sometimes people send in the fake tapes, don't they? Because they want to win once again. What is it? Is it 200 quid, 250 quid? It's been 250 quid for about 20 years. Yeah. yeah. Um, you don't think they should up their game to get some really good material? Yeah. And you have to wait about six years for it to come through. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't tell people that, they won't send it through. No, it's not, it's not. Um, <laughs> Well, well, people do send them in. They, you know, I mean, a lot of the time you're thinking, why is he filming himself putting some shelves up? You know, <laughs> you know, uh, and so people do set these things up and send them in. 
And I, I'm, I'm very hard on it, and I try to get them wheedled down. But do you have to call them? Do you have to say, look, we know this is a fake, stop pestering mm. us? Or do you say, yeah, we, we're not convinced? Or, yeah. or do they ever own up and say, OK? Well, uh, we just phone the police up and let them deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this one, do you want to set this one up for us? Because it is actually a crime to do that. Um... <laughs> This is when we got in, okay? This is, uh, see if you can spot how he's set it up. Okay? It's a man, he's just filming himself in the garden with his lawnmower. <laughs> right? <laughs> this can happen to anybody. That he'd obviously planned the, the trousers and all that, but then he also went for the treading on the broom and falling in the bucket afterwards. He yeah. gave you as much as he could for yeah, his money. Yeah. And he's now uh, the uh, vice chairman of the Liberal Party. It's uh, <laughs> Min <laughs> Ming Campbell. It's Ming Campbell. From uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we have to take another break. Before we say goodbye to Harry, uh, you must enjoy. Do you like coming on the show? Do you like meeting the other famous people? You met Louis before, of course. You yes. met Dame Helen for the first time this evening? Yes, of course. Okay. She's you, wonderful. You yeah. like meeting them this I'm evening? I'm a big fan of uh, Louis. Of course, I love Louis. I like Louis. I like uh, Dame Helen, of course, a wonderful uh, uh, actress. Who do, you, who do you like uh, but, the most? But out of the two of them, it's so difficult. Which is better? I don't know. The only real way to find out would be. Uh... <laughs> Um, before we get on with our next guest, let me just tell you this. Uh, something I read in the papers this week that a sperm bank has announced that it will no longer accept donations from red-headed donors. <laughs> Someone actually gasped then. <laughs> uh, and the reason, and this is true apparently, the reason is there is no demand. <laughs> and they've even developed... You'd think that would be against the law, wouldn't you? But they've developed a revolutionary screening process which can recognise the DNA helix from red-headed genomes, OK? It's sort of a red alert. And I think we've, <laughs> we've got a microscope image to show how it works. There's, um, so you see, that will show... They all appear to be red in there. But if we go in closer, you can see what I actually mean. You see, you can see on the... <laughs> we put Charlie Drake in there for the oldies. And Bonnie. Uh, let's get my next guest out. She is so regal, the Queen curtsies to her. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the frankly magnificent Dame Helen Mirren. Wow, 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 you look so good. It's so lovely to see you again. Dame Helen Mirren. You know, it is, oh, it, is, nice it is remarkable. I know, you know, maybe you get, I don't know if you do get tired of this, but you are such a knockout. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, I dressed up for you today, because, you know, you always used to wear these very flashy clothes. Not so much, no, no. So I saw this lovely Dolce and Gabbana outfit. With a G and, G. and I thought, that'll do great for Jonathan, because he'll be flashy, so I can be just as flashy. No, I've gone more kind of and like... you've gone all sort of sort funereal. Of like undertaker, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's great to say, hey, I I'm going to try so much today. do it day. Ah, dos Vedania, yes. I guess. So Something I think like I that. said hello to you, didn't I? Yes, probably. I don't know. <laughs> but you, you speak a bit of Russian now because you've been going back to, to meet the family that you've discovered out there. Yes, but I don't. I haven't actually learnt much Russian. I had to learn Russian, a bit of Russian, for the f film I just did, The Debt. But um, I don't speak Russian, which is sad because, considering my dad was Russian, but um, you know, I didn't learn it at home. Um, you said you learned Russian for the new movie, and the movie's The Debt, and it's great. It's a thriller, it's a tense thriller, and it's got a really emotional heart to it. But it's not set in Russia, is it? No, it's yes, set in Israel. It's yeah. actually an Israeli story. I mean, taken from a very good Israeli film originally, and uh, we filmed it. It's, it's supposed to take place in East Berlin um, and Israel. 
And you play a spy, which I love the whole idea of, you know, the spies in that period, the Cold War going on, it's a fantastic and... Well, it was the 60s, you know, and, uh, you know, our spy story, it's, it's Mossad. It's, it's not about the communists particularly, it's about tracking down a, a Nazi criminal, so it's not, it's not Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy type, no. you know. Um, it's, not, it's not as, uh, yeah, it's, it's not as thinky as that, it's more, there's action in it thinky. as well. Thinky. Yeah. That's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's sort of that think... sort of intellectual word? I say you thinky film. <laughs> I divide them into thinky, fighty and booby. Yeah. <laughs> <They're> my... <laughs> and foodie. There are foodie. Some foodie, love a foodie film. Like a foodie uh, but you get, to see some, you get to see some action in this as well, and you do a little bit of tussling as well, which is great. It's great I to do, see I you. do a sort of geriatric fight, what I call the geriatric fight. Yeah. When once you're down, it's really hard to get up. <laughs> <laughs> So if you want, you want to injure him, you just, you yeah, just make him yeah. fall over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at the clip. This is the, de this is the new Helen Moore movie, opens on the 30th of September. Look at this. I knew this would happen. I knew we'd be punished. I knew we'd have to pay. I thought I'd been punished already. God doesn't plant car bombs. I wasn't referring to the wheelchair. If I could go back, Rachel, I would change it all. But there's one thing I would never change. She isn't going to find out. She can never find out. It's a great film. I loved it. And it's been a big hit in America, hasn't it, already? Yes. OK, uh, I get the feeling, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're someone who, you like a challenge. You like it when people come to you and say, here's something in the movie you haven't done before, here's something... Yeah, you like I do. Go. And in red, you got to fire a lot of guns. Mm, I did, yes. We'll get on yes. that in a minute. In, in, Arthur, in Arthur, the big challenge was working with Russell Brand. <laughs> that, that was the biggest challenge of my life. <laughs> I, I found, well, you got on very well with him, didn't you? Oh, he's brilliant. I phoned him this afternoon. I said, I've got Dame Helen on the show. What can you tell me about working with Dame Helen? <laughs> what did he say? Well, he said he very much enjoyed that scene in particular, I think, where your character is, uh, this is Arthur, of course, and you're convalescing. You're not well, we won't give it away. Uh, and he said, but it was one of those scenes where normally, you know, there's a lot of sitting around, he said, but you spend a lot of time in the bed with you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I've, got a, I've, got, I've got a photograph of me and Russell in bed together, fully clothed, I might add. Well, but, he, said yeah. that, he said there was some leg contact going on. <laughs> well, he would, wouldn't he? You know? <laughs> 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 well, you survived, Russell, and you survived uh, the, all the gunplay in Red. And that's a great film. I don't know if you saw Red, but it was a bunch of kind of uh, Secret Service agents, top people who'd kind of gone into retirement. They Retired, the extremely game. dangerous, yeah. what Red stands for, yeah. Great cast as well. Yeah, we're doing Red 2. Red 2. Next, next, uh, next uh, year. Yeah. How did you enjoy it? Was this the first time you handled weapons to that extent? In a film? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the first time. I, duh, I did a film called Shadow Boxer where I played an assassin. Yeah. So, you know, and I'd sort of handled a gun before, but nothing like this one. Nothing like this. But you really see it against you, because normally, you know, and I've seen a lot of films, and I've watched a lot of action movies, <clears> you know, I love action films. Uh, often when you see uh, people who don't normally do action movies handling guns, they don't look at home with them, they don't look particularly comfortable. You looked to be really enjoying it. Well, uh, you know, they're, they're scary things, guns, because they are very visceral. Even, even ones in movies which aren't firing actual live ammunition, yeah. they're still I mean, kicking. But, you know, I trained with, gun, with all of those guns, but with live ammunition in California. So I had a, a day sort of with um, ammunition experts. And did you get pretty trained. good? I'm a pretty good shot, actually. Yeah, I am. I always kind of knew that I would be. I was always pretty good on the dart stall, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm not bad. Let's have a look. Uh, this is uh, Helen handing some kind of an automatic machine gun. Uh, but you really look like you know what you're doing with it. Look at this. This is from Red. Secret Service being tougher. Me too. <laughs> Not scared of the replay at all. I have to say, you know, <laughs> the hardest thing about doing that sort of scene, shooting those guns, is not to pull a really silly face while you're shooting. So what do you want to do? Because it's all going like that, and you find yourself going. <laughs> 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 I have to nerve. I want to relax my face. It's really difficult. Not so you just to, have to look businesslike. Yeah, you have to look businesslike. 
<laughs> um, let me ask you about the next project. I, I don't know if you, I think you've already started working on it. I know they've started filming. The, the Phil, Phil Spector film. I just finished it, actually. And this yeah. is quite a controversial subject matter anyway, of course, and I believe the yeah. approach they're taking is kind of controversial. Well, it's written and directed by David Mamet, so, you know, it's quite sort of substantial, yeah. um, with Al Pacino playing Phil, Phil Spector brilliantly, I might add. Just incredible. Um, it, it's about... The well, there he is. <laughs> there he is. The problem is when you see that, because it's such a bizarre look, yeah. that you think, what's going on? But that's what that's Spectre... That's what Phil Spectre Well, we had the... This is the actual like Phil Spectre that, in that period when he was yeah. getting caught, I think. I mean, even more And that was, that was... I know this is going to sound stupid, but that was a wig, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, yes, of yeah. course. <laughs> but but uh, do you... Uh, when you're choosing parts, do you, look, uh, do you look for those kind of roles like that uh, to vary them with parts like The Debt, like Red, which are substantial in their own yeah. way, but more kind yeah, of sure. popcorn but, movies. But, you know, to work with Pacino, I mean, really a big ambition of mine, so incredible. There can't be um, many left who you haven't worked Pacino, with. Pacino, Brand, you know, what <laughs> more can you ask? <laughs> yeah, really. have, you, who are have you worked with Nicholson? <laughs> Yes, I have. Yeah, which, which yeah. Film you do I did a film called The Pledge. Oh, The Pledge. Yeah, yeah that, I, I have one very... scene with him, one day. Yeah. And who um, are there? Are there any on your list? Have you got a kind of uh, list, a wish list of actors that you well, like? Well, to... you know, now I've done Pacino. It, uh, that sort of that one was like right up there. Um, Clooney. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, of course. De Niro. Yes, in Dan a good movie. He's unfortunately he does crap movies nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great actor, but you know. I don't know why, what he's doing. Before you go, do you get, you seem to be working pretty solidly. You yeah. seem to be, uh, and I guess, you know, films come up, you want to do them, of course you're going to leap at the chance, but do you get much time off? Do you, do you clear time to be uh, off with your husband? Do you have kind of holiday time or do you just work and then Not when is exactly it that? exactly holiday time, because when I'm with him, usually he's working. I'm going off to America on Friday. He's filming with Jason Statham in, and Jennifer Lopez, <laughs> uh, who I beat out for Body of the Year, so that might be a bit yeah. awkward. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you don't take too much time off because I love seeing you on screen almost as much as I love having you when you come on my shows. You're always so Great kind, you always you. come on. It's lovely to have you back. Ladies and gentlemen, Dame Helen Mirren. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She looks incredible for any age, doesn't she? A uh, big thank you to all my guests tonight, Helen Moore and of course, Louis Spence and Harry Hill. Please join me next week with my guests will be Ewan McGregor, the finest talk show host to come out of Norwich, which isn't saying much, I know, but that's Alan Partridge will be here. We have music from CeeLo Green and, straight from the X Factor, Gary and Talisa will be here as well. Yeah, you like that one, don't you? Yeah. Right now, though, to play us out with Days Are Forgotten, will you please give it up for the fantastic Kasabian? <laughs>
to have Kasabian back. Now Frank Skinner joins Adrian Charles tomorrow evening to look through the week's biggest news stories in the return of that Sunday night show at 10.15. Next this evening, Denzel Washington stars in American Gangster.